Okay, so first, you're gonna need access to that power steering pump and its lines. So, take that off. Two clips on the side, one on the back. Rock it a bit, wiggle it around other brackets you made over the years. Loosen it. Rotate that out of the way. Take your filter. Yeah. What do you think? Still looking pretty good. And note I don't run a can and filter, I run a paper filter. And that's because I do have the impression that paper just filters better. So this is the most ridiculously long extension you'll see. And that's because the airbox, there are two bolts at the front, one nut at the back. And it is a pain in the butt undoing them when you have to be down in there with them. So, make yourself a ridiculously long extension. Such so make yourself a ridiculously long extension with this one. And suddenly, it's pretty easy. This is the new part, an Edelman 80290. Now, Edelman only seems to make the high pressure side, not the low pressure side, which is too bad. Now, I feel it's reasonably fair to admit, I pre-loosened this sucker a little bit. Because I had some recollection of how difficult it was to get at it and get off. What you have here is a certain type of conundrum where you can see it, you can easily touch it. You can even, in some ways, get a wrench on it. See it up there? But then you try to turn it and it hits everything, including the loop of the low pressure line that goes over top. Interesting that they chose to do that rather than say route the low pressure line this way and up, which would have plenty of room, but it is what it is and it is where it is. So keep in mind, you'll be using a wrench such as this. Note that mine's an 18 millimeter. This is also a Cherokee where if you have done any wrenching on your Cherokee, you will know sometimes it is metric and sometimes it's standard. Try not to tear your hair out too much. Just carry both, try both. And uh, realize also that just because you're putting on a new part doesn't mean that it isn't a different size again, because well, it is. You might note that after my talk about standard and metric, well, a flare nut wrench turns out a 5 8 fit really nicely up top. Go figure. Yep, turn just fine. You'll note there is a nut below that as well. That if its markings are what I think they are, it may have left hand threads. At least that's what it means when you're running gas through it. A piece of paper towel there should tell you something. Unsurprisingly, just when I thought I might get away with not having to drain the reservoir and not need as much fluid to fill it, yeah, you're gonna have to drain the reservoir on this side. The second that fitting came out, it started welling up. So, yeah, fluid extractor time. And here we are with our fluid extractor. Came from nothing but finest Chinese in. Well, actually the fluid extractor itself works fairly well. Works by basically drawing a vacuum on this vessel here through this rubber seal here, has this hose coming down and basically open. Has another hose there that's not meant to open the fluid. So when you get it full up to a certain point, you should probably stop pumping. So, you don't have to pump constantly. You basically just have to keep that under a vacuum. You learn to feel that it's under vacuum. And when I say the finest chainesium, I mean, I just bought a Princess Auto, your equivalent of Harbor Freight. And for not much money, which is just fine, but boy these hoses not much age to it and it is brittle it's pretty hard to keep it down in there it's not so flexible anymore okay one thing we're going to do is it says to install the new o-rings lube them up with some power steering fluid hopefully use the fresh clean stuff because that's uh, that's kind of the intention 
I have to get them aligned just right so they tighten properly and don't cross thread. Because I'm quite certain if you cross thread this little sucker and make sure it is seated down in its hole there rather than having to force it. But if you cross thread this little sucker, it's that's pretty much the end of your day. There you go. 5 8 flare wrench seems to fit just fine. Right about now, I'd say uh, you saw all of the wrenching on this. You'd be think you'd be kicking yourself the same as I am. Let's make sure there's no contamination on this. A little bit of air will help you get it out. Don't have your face in the wind. It's good to have a hand up and don't do it too much so it's not draped to your ears or rear ear plugs in the shop. That is a great idea. So way down in here. A miserable little dark spot is where my pressure my high pressure fitting goes in the front of my steering box. It is about to make a horrible mess. Right. Get yourself out. We'll make this worse than it has to be. There we go. She is retrieved. And look at that glorious monster of a thing. Yeah. Not really that glorious, but you know what? 21 years service. And it has been on and off a few times on the bottom end. I can't really complain. It's done its job well. Alright. Now keep in mind, as you get everything down through here, you're going to go under this radiator hose that typically has a spring inside it. You're going to go tuck in there. You're going to want to clear your steering shaft here. You're going to want to clear anything else that might be running into. I might have to rotate it slightly up top. We'll see because it is rubbing on. I don't know what am I rubbing on? Oh, the fuel line or fuel to the fuel rail. Yeah, you don't really want to rub a hole in that one. So let's avoid doing that. Anyways, you'll uh, you'll find that you hit it a couple times. And don't think you're a champ and you got lucky. Chances are you got a, you scooped a bunch of dirt up even though you think you kept it clean. And if you install it like that, well, the whole job was for naught because now you've int introduced a great deal of contamination into the system. You're gonna find you need to wiggle and waggle the damn thing. You get it seated, make sure it's aligned. Just when you think it might be tightening up, try pulling up you find that it's not aligned. Keep in mind, there's going to be pressure from that, or a little bit of pressure pushing this thing out of alignment. So you're going to want to feel around, be gentle with it. Again, if you strip the lines or strip this hole, there's no, highly unlikely you're going to be able to do anything to retap it. You're very likely to have just destroyed your steering box, and now you have to replace the steering box for a stripped fitting. Well, that's not fun, is it? Nor is it cheap. So, don't do that. Be gentle. Take your time. Eventually, you'll feel it go home. You'll want to wiggle it and test it and make sure. Because eh. it will lie to you. Oh, nope, see, that felt good. One thing you can do sometimes to get yourself a little break is turn a fitting backwards until you hear that, that little click, and you'll feel it too. And what that is, is that is the threads walking up and walking up until they fall off the edge. And then you know you're at the beginning of where the thread was cut. It can help you to get on there. Well, sometimes it will. There we go. Try it again. Keep in mind, you got to keep it perfectly aligned. And your fingers are going to get nice and oily while you do this. And know that I wear gloves because they clean up easy. I don't go into the house with my hands all oily and stinking of everything. We have it now well not quite we shall keep trying 
All right, looks like there is a possibly a little bit of conflict right here with the low pressure line where it may be bumping it. Again, I'm just feeling around the low pressure line, making sure it's not hitting on, on the steering shaft or anything, causing any problems. So wiggle it around, run it backwards, try and find that spot. That'll get you done. Through the magic of editing, I get to pretend that, you know, that only took me a, one or two tries and then it perfectly threaded on there. My little trick I gave you worked just great, but I will tell you this, it is not going to be easy. Do not do this part when you're tired or hungry. Address those problems first before you start getting furious and throwing wrenches. Note also, even once it started, boy, what a hard to get at pain in the butt this is. Deal with it. Life will give you difficult things. It's how you solve those problems that <laughs> says what kind of person you are. Okay, let's keep going on this. Got a bit better light going on, so you might be able to see a little bit of what I'm doing. Notice that every little slight turn on this is an absolute fight. It just is. It just is what it is. Again, like I said before, you're, don't do this while angry. Don't do it while tired. You will throw a wrench and you will say things that you will later regret. Because this is just... Plus, keep in mind, you don't really want the high pressure line to be loose. Now, you can prove things for yourself if you really want to by removing the low pressure line. Looking at the O-ring on the high pressure line, I opted to not do that. Partly that's also because my local auto parts store does not have this nice crimped low pressure line. Actually, it might not even be crimped on that end. It might. Yeah, it's just got a clamp. Essentially, they don't have that. All they have is they sell will sell you a section of hose. Well, I'm not as worried about the section of hose that's low pressure as I am about high pressure and fittings. But I am worried about the O-ring on that, and I do not have an O-ring for that. And while I have a universal O-ring kit, it's a pretty cheap universal O-ring kit, really meant to only get me through emergencies and taking something off that I can avoid taking off is not enough of an emergency for me to risk that that, that O-ring, also sold by Princess Auto in a big kit for, I don't know, 12 to $20, somewhere in there. I'm going to assume those might not be quite rated for this. So, rather than put one in and have it blow out and have this thing just piss power steering fluid all over on the trail or on the road somewhere, possibly blow back onto the header and cause a fire, we're going to... We're going to cross our fingers on this one and not take the chance that that O-ring on that low pressure is also flattened out and junk and going to leave us stranded somewhere if we take it off because we can't replace it. And during this whole COVID-19 thing, it's not quite as easy to go into a store and just check out everything in the back. Make sure you've got the right size. Now, you might find yourself having to do a little bit of gentle bending on this. You're not going to want to use heat because of where it is and what it holds. But use a calibrated, nice, gentle feel. I'd say calibrated, but, you know, that comes with time. If you've got a calibrated feel, you're probably not watching this video. And you probably don't need someone to tell you that. So, that feels nice and tight without being ridiculous over here and we've got a wrench out let's see if we can't get it on this low pressure side make sure it's actually tight may defeat what i've just said 
about uh, trying to not damage it. Yeah, that one's good and tight. But old habits are hard, and sometimes we're our own worst enemies. Now, I noted over here, that's kind of touching that fuel rail. So, let's see. Slight bit of gentle massaging. Keeping an eye on this so we're not getting cakes. Ah. Clearance. Ooh. Nice clearance up the back that I can feel. Nicely routed here. For my own. Yep. Tight. Now, you'll have to go through a bleeding procedure. Now, if I remember correctly, you basically jack the front end off the ground, both tires up in the air, and turn them back and forth not quite lock to lock just before the lock and then back and forth and back and forth that's a pretty standard one if uh if i read that there is a different one well we'll just update this part and you'll never have to see the part where i was wrong or maybe i'll leave it in because it's kind of fun uh learning together now we're all set to fill now one thing you didn't get to see me do was clean my funnel so got the odd spot on it, but nothing that's gonna fall off in there. But a bit of paper towel run around in it. Whatever you wanna use, if you wanna use a cleaning product, brake clean can be a little hard on some plastics and really make a mess. But I typically roll up a paper towel, make it into a dart type thing, stick that down inside far enough that I can pull it through and I also use a bit of compressed air on them because the last thing you want to do is pick up your funnel and funnels are filthy filthy things and stick it somewhere where you're running nice clean fluid into a controlled closed system and wash all the gunk out of your funnel into that system now you filled it with contaminants I think you could say it's undoing good work with sloppiness it happens. You'll make the mistake at some point. But if I can help you avoid it, I'll darn well help you avoid it. So we're going to start it. Turn the steering. Almost a lock, but not quite. Back and forth a number of times. Check our level. See where things are at. Now you might find your steering fluid looks like this. That's aerated. In other words, it's full of little tiny bubbles. Those are what we're trying to bleed out of the system. Well, they can take a while to settle and realistically they make the fluid foamy. So that foamy fluid now has gas trapped within it. So it has more volume than if it wasn't foamy. So you're gonna find that it appears to be more full than it kind of is. Now, in the directions for this system and you'll note let's look down here that while it's wet around there that's from changing where i cleared things off around that fitting which you're going to want to do before you do any testing because it will get some on there while you're uh while you're tightening everything but you'll note that it is dry as could be on that fitting and if it's going to leak it's going to leak around the top of it and the bottom Typically, it's not just going to leak in one place because that uh, that threaded portion can move up and down there and it's not necessarily tight on there. It's the O-ring that basically seals the metal pipe and your steel fitting there that rotates with your threads and your nut. That basically pushes your steel pipe into the fitting tightly enough that it doesn't leak past there. So if it starts getting to the threads and coming out, the O-ring's already failed. It's It's not working at all. Keep that in mind. Now you're going to take your uh, power steering dipstick here. Note that the bottom line is add. That middle line that's actually quite a bit towards the top is cold and the top line is hot. So this fluid expands when hot. Take it, wiggle it until she drops in. Basically gets those tabs passed. There we are. Pull it out and we'll have a look. And one of the markings there yeah we're pretty close to being at the right spot for cold a little bit high we're also a little bit aerated so we're going to run that back and forth a few times with the, with the front in the air 
see if we can't get a bit more air out of there and we might have to let this thing settle for a while while that air comes out of that lid, that fluid. Now, another thing I threatened to do was adjust my serpentine belt. I'm going to use a 15 millimeter combination wrench such as this one. Loosen the bolt on your tensioner. This is your tensioner pulley. This guy down here. Don't mess with these. They don't do anything. This is your adjustment right here. So, tighten. Basically do this. Make sure you loosen that one. Keep checking for tension. You don't want it too tight. At the same time, you don't want to turn your air conditioning on and have it squeal, which is what I'm experiencing at the moment. Keep in mind that when you re-tighten the bolt on your tensioner pulley, it will actually change the tension again. So if you get it perfect, perfect, and you're laughing about it, you might just not quite have it as perfect when you tighten that. I find usually it tightens up a bit more. Now, as far as actually setting it, I am no expert. Consult your shop manual, which will tell you to consult a dealership, which is quite useless. So basically, I go by feel, try to set it tight enough that I have some deflection, so I'm not beating up the bearings too badly, but not so much deflection that the belt is slipping, doing things like wearing the label off here, howling and embarrassing you on a cold morning, or a warm morning for that matter when you really want your air conditioning to work and the thing's just screaming away at everybody. Yeah, nothing says my my Jeep might be having problems like a howling belt when in reality it's a pretty minor thing but something that you shouldn't keep happening so you get in here again keep in mind sometimes it'll grab your wrench it is a tight spot it is a Cherokee keep that in mind keep your wrench at a lower angle and it won't be as likely to bind on your electric fan you don't really need to leave your wrench in here but if you if you do this wrong, you might be leaving your wrench stuck in here. Don't even, don't even bother trying to put a ratchet in on this side. You can use a ratchet here. That's not a problem. It makes things easier for yourself. Snug is good. A little bit more bent belt tension. It's also good to listen to them. If it sounds like it's being rough on things, then it's a good time to check stuff out. Now. When I first got this Jeep, my power steering pump went. So this one has got a, it's getting up there now. Hasn't seen that much mileage, but it has seen pretty hard use. You'll find if you replace this, there is a metal pipe around the side here. Also get that pipe and replace it at the same time. Use a bit of pipe sealant on it, I think. Or it might tell you not to use pipe sealant. Your mileage may vary. But replace it with a new one at that time. I, when I did that, I reused that and it's only because it's kind of crusted up that it's stopped having a little weep there occasionally. It doesn't always leak, but again, it's, it's a pain in the ass when you smell hot coolant. It makes your vehicle seem like it's a bit of a piece of junk. So, a little bit of maintenance goes a long way. Happy with how my new power steering line went. And uh, I think that job is essentially done. We'll be running it back and forth a bit. I'm gonna let it sit for a bit and see if this fluid stops being so aerated and make sure I've set my cold temperature good. And then uh, a little bit later, I will check the fluid level again. I might have to add a little bit down the road, so don't assume that just because it's at a good level right now that it's perfect. Also, while we're talking about things, if you're finding that yours is constantly aerating, even if it's not had a new component added, Make sure you haven't filled it too much. And the other thing to make sure of is there are clips here. They hold this tank to this pump. There are O-rings between this tank and this pump. If your O-rings begin to fail, it will start puking on itself a bit. But your biggest indicator is your pump will start hitting dead spots when you're turning. And you might think, well, it's just because I have a front lock or I'm running it pretty hard. No, look into it. It's starting, when it's under heavy load, it's sucking air in. This is not good for the pump. 
can cause cavitation, which can blow, just blow things apart, essentially. It causes little pockets of extreme high pressure that can actually take chunks of the metal. So, you can buy kits to replace just the O-rings on this without having to replace this entire assembly. Chances are your power steering pump is still good. Chances are your tank is still good. Just replace the O-rings. It's, oh gosh, I want to say it's maybe $10 for a kit, maybe $15. You won't need all the O-rings that are in the kit, but the ones you use, <laughs> you won't regret it. And your Jeep will thank you for it. Anyhow, off to the next job on this thing, and we'll get this old girl all tuned up.